That's rocks laid down by water. Now, in those rocks, there are billions and billions of dead things that are fossils. Now, when you have billions and billions of dead things and rocks laid down by water all over the world, uh, I think you've got a pretty strong argument for catastrophic judgment. But, of course, the evolutionist tells us this was accomplished by a slow, gradual buildup over millions of years. And as we saw last night, I think it's accomplished by a rapid year-long series of catastrophes that it could not be slow, and the evidence for slow um, is not there. But the evolutionary representation of this record of the rocks looks like this. This is in all the biology textbooks, all the earth science textbooks. And we're told that as you go further down in the rocks, you find these simple animals. And as you come up nor near the top, they get more complex. And then the modern animals near the top, which shows an evolutionary progression. And the record of the rocks has recorded like a tape recorder, the evolution of life through time. That's their interpretation of what we're seeing. The biggest problem with this representation is rather obvious, and that is that you can't go out and look in the rocks and find it anywhere. It exists in the textbooks, but it does not exist anywhere on the face of the earth, that is, in the complete form that you see in the textbooks. Now, if that sounds like a rather brash statement, notice the uh, the quote from Leet and Judson, one of the typical textbooks used as a geology text in our universities. Because we cannot find sedimentary rock representing all of Earth time neatly in one convenient area, we must piece together the rock sequence from locality to locality. This process of tying one rock sequence in one place to another in some other place is known as correlation. And so instead of digging down and finding it in any one place, you find some over here and find some over there, and you tie it together and correlate it, correlate the layers, not based on what you see in any one place. As the Encyclopedia Britannica says, the end product of correlation is a mental abstraction called the geologic column. Now, you don't get that impression in the undergraduate earth science textbooks. That's a shame. But this is not concrete, if you please. Uh, it is a mental abstraction that is built together. Well, how do you build it? How do you know when you correlate whether this rock goes down or up? Well, if you're an evolutionist and you have rocks with simple animals, where do they go? They go on the bottom. I'm somewhat oversimplifying, but that's a general picture of what's happening. R.H. Rastel in the Encyclopedia Britannica puts it this way. It cannot be denied that geologists are here arguing in a circle. The succession of organisms has been determined by a study of their remains embedded in the rocks, and the relative ages of the rocks are determined by the organisms they contain. Now, let me illustrate and simplify, somewhat oversimplifying, but still uh, not misrepresenting. A person says, we have a primitive fossil here. Okay, how do you know? And then, of course, that would go on the bottom of the column. But how do you know that's a primitive fossil? Well, it's found in an old rock. All right, that would make sense. Uh, if you've got an old rock, it'd be a primitive fossil. But now, how do you know that this is an old rock? Well, it's got a primitive fossil in it. And this is obviously not proving anything. But that is how this column in its complete form is built. You don't determine the kind of rock it is by the kind of rock it is, but by the critters that you find in it, the dead things in the rock, and uh, how primitive you think they are. There are a number of other problems with it as well.